to His Excellency the Ambassador Munir Al Ram. Uh, he's the President of the United Nations Economic and Social Council. Por favor, Ambassador Akram. Sí. Gracias. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you for uh, this invitation. I'd like to thank, in particular, the distinguished uh, Minister of Foreign Affairs of Mexico and, and other panelists uh, for this opportunity. Um, the 2002 Monterey Conference was the largest ever gathering of finance ministers who discussed uh, the means of implementation of the Millennium Development Goals. Today, we are meeting in uh, very different circumstances. It is another inflection point in history. The world economy contracted by 15%. Uh, we face the deepest recession in a century. 400 million jobs have been lost. 100 million people have been pushed back into poverty. Millions of businesses have closed. And the prices and demand for commodities has fallen. The service industries collapsed foreign investment declined, debt burden is over, affecting over 50 countries. What are the actions we need to take? I think it has been rightly said that the first and foremost action is to ensure that the vaccine is available to everybody, everywhere, on an equitable basis and at affordable prices. The COVAX facility still faces a $20 billion gap in financing and that must be filled as a priority. Secondly, we need to look at the liquidity and fiscal constraints of the developing countries uh, who are facing high ser their debt servicing obligations, high borrowing costs, capital outflows, foreign exchange, decline in foreign exchange reserves. Uh, they would be unable to meet even the requirements of a response to the COVID crisis, much less a recovery from the crisis and, and uh, achievement of the SDGs and the climate development goals. The magnitude of this crisis calls for a massive and coordinated national and international response. In the Economic and Social Council and in other forums at the United Nations, we have been giving thought as to what can be done on an urgent basis to enable the developing countries to cope with this uh, unprecedented uh, crisis that is mainly a fiscal and liquidity crisis. First, of course, is debt relief. Uh, six countries have already defaulted. Others may be obliged to do so. The G20's DSSI initiative has offered some welcome relief, but it is minuscule as compared to the requirements of the developing countries. It seems ine inevitable that the SSI will need to be extended and it will need to be expanded to those developing countries which are in debt stress. And these are over 50 countries. Secondly, the private sector which has been mentioned quite considerably, has not participated in the debt suspension. And so far, there is no indication of how uh, the private sector would be brought into providing relief to the developing countries where a large proportion of the debt is held by private creditors. Given the wide reach of the private credit rating agency, I think it is, it is time now to take the matter into official hands, to consider the establishment of a publicly controlled credit rating agency, which is responsive to development goals rather than the profit objectives that guides the credit, present credit rating agency. Secondly, I think it's urgent to unlock the liquidity which is required by the developing countries through the creation of new special drawing rights. It is gratifying that the US Treasury Secretary has recently recommended the creation of $500 billion in new SDRs. We must also consider how the new and 
presently unutilized SDRs could be redistributed to the developing countries who actually require the liquidity. There is a proposal from Costa Rica for the creation of a fund uh, to alleviate the COVID-19 economics called FACE. There is also a proposal from the Executive uh, Commission uh, of, from Africa uh, for the creation of a liquidity and sustainability facility. Both these proposals uh, require careful consideration and a positive response. ODA budgets have fallen this year estimated by an estimated 30% in 2020 as compared to 2019. It is important that the advanced economies fulfill their pledge for a 0.7% GNI uh, flows to the developing countries. This is not the time to step back from ODA commitments. At the same time, multilateral development banks have not participated in the debt suspension. We must ensure that flows from multilateral development banks which have set up the rapid response facilities, that these flows are at least equivalent to a debt suspension. And that if it is necessary to recapitalize some of the multilateral development banks, that this can be done in an expeditious way. Thirdly, we need to address the persisting illicit financial flows from developing countries. Trillions of dollars continue to flow out of developing countries in illicit financial flows to haven countries. This is not nothing short of criminal at this time when the needs of the developing countries are so vast and, and so urgent. The 14 recommendations which have been made by the United Nations Panel on Financial Accountability, Transparency and Integrity called the FACTI Panel. These recommendations deserve careful and positive consideration. Fifth, the invest investment in sustainable infrastructure will impact 92% of the SDGs. It is critical for recovery and especially for the achievement of the SDGs and the planet goals, that we must find ways of connecting the $378 trillion which exists in the private economy in the hands of asset managers of somehow connecting that money to investment in sustainable infrastructure in the developing countries, which require at least $1 trillion every year in infrastructure investment. I have proposed the creation of a public-private facility for sustainable infrastructure investment in association with the United Nations, a public partnership. This could be a central mechanism of trying to do what has so far not been done by the existing platforms that exist Finally, the, we must, to build back better, we must create a resilient and sustainable global economy. The achievement of climate goals has been repeatedly under, underlined in recent times, including by the forthcoming chair of the COP26, the United Kingdom. But in order to succeed, to implement the objectives of the Paris Agreements, that developed country partners must fulfill their pledge to raise a hundred billion dollars in climate finance annually for investment in both mitigation and adaptation. Uh, dear friends, if the COVID-19 crisis has taught us any, anything, it is that we are one humanity, that no one will be safe until everyone is safe. And I would apply that lesson to the global economy as well. Unless all the developing countries are able to recover from this crisis, the global economy will falter 
And if the COVID comes back, the global economy could collapse once again. So let us not be buoyed by asset bubbles created in the stock market. Let us look at the reality of the real economy and the reality of the developing countries. And it is to those realities that we must respond and we must respond massively with political will and courage. And that I hope will be the message that will come out from your uh, meeting today. Thank you so much for this opportunity. Thank you.